Hi everyone, today we're going to look at how you can live stream with vMix to multiple locations and how you can independently control the streams. If you're new to live streaming in vMix, I'd recommend watching our first live streaming tutorial video that's linked in the description. Live streaming to multiple platforms has become increasingly popular as more websites, services and social networks open up to live streaming. Quite often your viewers are spread across all of these different platforms and in order to reach your full audience, you may need to stream to all of them. Being able to stream to all of your viewers is the first big advantage of simulcasting your live streams. It allows you to maximize your message and reach the most people. Another advantage of streaming to multiple locations is that you can create premium content for different audiences. You might be doing your live show to multiple locations, but choose to stream your post-show content to one provider. You could use this as a funnel for marketing to your viewers, a way to make your show more exclusive, or to help build a community on that particular platform. Now being able to stream to multiple locations independently also gives you the opportunity to create short streams to other streaming providers while you're actually on your main stream. These short streams essentially allow you to advertise to other locations where you're currently streaming. For example, maybe your main audience is on YouTube but you want to let all of your Twitter followers know you're streaming right now on YouTube. Doing this helps consolidate your audiences on your main platform. With the independent streaming in vMix, you can choose to use a different audio mix on your videos. This is handy if you have a multilingual stream. You could stream one in English and the other one in Spanish, for example. Keep in mind that using multiple streams will require more bandwidth and more resources. Instead of using vMix directly, you might want to consider using a restreaming platform such as Restream. They'll take one stream from vMix and then distribute that to many different platforms. Some of the other paid providers also offer restreaming or simulcasting services, so check your streaming provider if you're considering um, going to multiple locations. Okay, so let's jump over into the vMix interface and take a look at the streaming settings. So here we are in the vMix interface. Now if you want to set up your multiple streams, you just need to go into your streaming settings which are at the bottom of your vMix interface. Click the little gear icon and it will bring up the streaming settings window. Probably the easiest way to send out multiple streams is to use a restreaming option. Now we have direct integration with a place called Restream and what that does is it allows you to send a single stream to them and then they will distribute that to multiple locations. So they'll send it out to two, five, ten, however many accounts that you've got set up with them to distribute to all kinds of different places, free providers and paid providers that you've got set up. Now this is going to use a lot less resources on your computer and bandwidth because you're only sending one stream. Okay, so if you want to set up independent streams directly from vMix, you'll notice that we have a one, two and three button at the top there. So when we stream to a single location, you know, we can select the destination um, from the list, we fill out our information and we connect to it and select our channel. Or if we're using a different provider, we may have to log in and create the stream um, directly from the interface. So if I go to the second one, I can do the exact same thing there. Say if I want to use a custom RTMP stream, um, I can use that here. I can add the URL and the stream name. Or the third one, I can go through and I can say, go to um, Twitch or somewhere like that. So I've got everything set up, ready to go um, for three different streams. So it's exactly the same as setting up a single stream. Now one thing to consider when using the drop down menu here, if you're going to use Facebook, you can't use the drop down menu because there's restrictions with their API in streaming to Facebook with their API and then to other destinations. So if you want to stream to Facebook and other places, you'll need to use the custom RTMP method. So when you're in your Facebook account, you can start a new live stream. It should open up a page like this. Um, this is currently facebook.com slash live slash create. Um, and then you can click create live stream here. And then it will bring up your settings you'll need in order to create the live stream. So as we mentioned before, you've got the server URL and the stream key that you just need to copy and paste directly into vMix. Now you'll notice that I've ticked enable persistent stream key and that means that you can use the same key, stream key over and over again, which makes it a little bit easier. Now once you start streaming in vMix, you will still need to come back here and click go live, so keep that in mind. Keep in mind that live streaming is changing all the time, so a lot of companies do change their APIs and permissions and that type of thing. So the rules may or may not have changed by the time that this video actually gets published. 
All right, so now we've got that out of the way, we can look at the different streaming settings for multiple destinations. All right, so I'm gonna select a profile that I created before. So I've got three destinations set up here, um, ready to go and ready to stream to. So you can see my first one here, it's going to IBM. I've got my settings down here, it's 1080p, 4.5 megabit, um, and that channel selected and we're ready to go. For my second stream, I've got YouTube, and I can choose to use the same settings as stream one. So I can untick this here, and then I can go into the streaming settings and actually make changes. So maybe I only wanna do 720p, and maybe I wanna tweak some changes here as well. So let's just say um, I wanted to change the bit rate to two megabit. And I also wanted to change the aspect ratio. So I wanna to stream to YouTube in a vertical um, aspect ratio. So I'm going to do that and click save down the bottom. Now you will notice that the use hardware encoder is ticked. Now we've mentioned this before in other videos, the later series NVIDIA graphics cards, 9, 10 and above, uh, sorry, later, they allow you to do two hardware encodes on the GeForce cards. So if you have one of these cards, you're able to do two encodes on it. So that frees up your CPU to do other things. So typically people will use a single record and a single stream with the hardware encoder. So if you do go over two, vMix will let you know and say, hey, you'll need to turn one off because you're using too many encodes on the graphics card. So because I'm only doing two streams today and I'm not doing a record, I'm gonna set the second one to use the hardware encoder as well. So now I'm gonna move over to my third um, streaming provider and I'm gonna untick this here so I can edit the settings. And then I'm gonna go into my settings here. I wanna stream at 1080 but I want to change the audio. So by default, the channel is on master, but I want to use bus A. So in vMix, I can go through with my audio inputs and I can select different audio inputs to use different audio buses. So for example, I did a stream where I had a different language being spoken. I can use that on bus A and I can stream that out with the same video. So you're always gonna be sending out the same video in the stream but you can choose to change what audio is heard on that particular stream. So I'm gonna do that and I'm going to click save. Now, because we've got two hardware encodes already running on the first and second stream, I'm going to untick use hardware encoder. All right, so those are my three streams set up. Now I could add to my profile again if I want to, I've already saved it to super stream and I'm gonna click save and close. When doing multiple streams, you will require more computer resources and more bandwidth, so please keep that in mind and do plenty of testing before doing multiple streams. Now, one big thing to remember is that you're going to need to add up all of your streams together to know how much upload you're going to need for your internet connection. So if you've got three streams, don't forget to add all of your bit rates together to know how much internet you're going to need. Now, we usually recommend for people to use, say, 50% of their upload, um, however, some people will go up to 60, 70, 80%, but just be cautious and do plenty of testing before you do multiple streams. All right, so down the bottom here, um, I can click the stream button and that's gonna start all of my streams at once. If I click the little uh, arrow here, I can choose to start the streams individually, or if I go into my streaming settings, I can click start all, or I can click start one. If I click the second one, it will start two, start three, and I can click this button here. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to start all three. So I'm gonna click the stream button. So that's going to fire up streams and once they're all connected, it's going to go red. So now I'm currently streaming to three locations. Um, so if anybody out there is watching, hello. Now, um, say I wanna stop one of the streams, I can go into the streaming settings, I can select it and I can click stop or I can go back down here, I can click the little arrow and I can choose to stop, let's say, my Twitch video. So that's now going to stop my Twitch stream. So if I go back into the settings now, I'll see that one is still going uh, and three has now stopped. Let's just say I wanna now stop my IBM one and now you can see that YouTube is still going. So if I want to, I can then um, start and stop them again by using this menu um, or from the settings as well. So let's just say you have some stream issues. Say that you've got um, some network issues or something or something, you, you've got an underpowered computer. Um, if you go into the settings, you'll see, you'll notice that the red light 
uh, the red streaming button is flashing orange or is staying orange. Now that might not necessarily be that all of your streams are being affected, but it might just be one of them. So if you click along the streams, the ones that are streaming well will be red and the ones that aren't working will be orange or um, amber. Yeah, so that will give you the opportunity to turn that one off. Um, so you're able to independently control all of them. So we're still streaming to YouTube. Um, so I'm just going to turn that one off now. So we have some information about um, troubleshooting if you're getting orange or an amber uh, color on the stream in the description below. Now, another thing that we do need to cover is streaming with multiple bit rates. So some destinations actually require you to stream using different bit rates if you want your audiences to see uh, different quality options. Places like YouTube will transcode one stream into multiple quality settings, however other ones require you to actually send it through to them. Now if your streaming provider is requiring the multi bit rate streams, they'll either allow you to stream using one stream key and then different uh, bit rates, or they'll require to use a different stream key for every single bit rate. Okay, so I'll quickly show you what I mean by that. So I'm just going to the second one here. So if you know, if my provider asked me to use the same stream key as the first one, I would select stream one multi bit rate and then change the settings down here. If my provider was asking me to do multiple stream keys and a multiple bit rate, I would need to select custom multi bit rate and then enter the URL and stream key here and then change the quality settings down below. Now, if you do have any questions about this, there's going to be a link in the description with the help guide on multi bit rate streaming. So that's how you set up the multiple streams in the vMix settings. You've got three options here, or you can use a restreaming option if you wanted to, as we showed from the drop down menu. Um, don't forget to check out the vMix website for information on computer builds and minimum specifications and that type of thing when getting started with streaming um, and with vMix. So thanks for watching this video. Don't forget the three rules of live streaming to test, test, and test again. Now this is particularly important for doing multiple streams as you're gonna need more bandwidth and more resources than just doing a single stream. If you have any questions about vMix and live streaming, please send us an email via the support page on vMix.com. If you'd like to download a free 60-day unwatermarked trial of vMix Pro, just check out vMix.com for the download. See you later. Thanks for watching. Click to watch another exciting vMix video or head to vmix.com for a free 60-day trial. See you later.